the artist of today, Mr. Sean Vincent DePaul. Um, and there will be a live performance uh, followed by an interview with the artist. And I'd like to introduce the interviewer, uh, Ms. Arani Jayakumar, who's studying international management and entrepreneurship, currently in Iceland for the semester abroad. And in her free time, she's very active in community work. Um, and she's originally from Switzerland. So I'd like to welcome Arani to the stage. Thank you very much, Abirami. Hello, everyone. Um, born in Jaff Jaffna, Sri Lanka, Sean and his family fled the country due to a civil war and moved to Canada as refugees. With a family of five children, Sean's parents worked multiple jobs and slowly started a new life in Canada. Growing up in various neighborhoods in downtown Toronto, Sean and his family eventually settled in Brampton where he attended high school. There he began to find his passion for rap music and began releasing music with various groups in the city. In 2007, Sean performed Magnolias with his childhood friend Derek Da Costa and released two albums over the course of three years. The duo toured frequently and have performed in over 15 countries worldwide independently. In 2014, Magnolias came to a halt and Sean began writing as a solo artist for the first time in his career. In 2015, Sean connected to Toronto-based artist Coleman Hell, producer LA Plus CH, artist MacDoc Jones, and become a member of Sideways Crew. The same year, he became a father and decided to forego touring altogether to focus on his daughter and writing his solo debut. Since then, he has released multiple solo projects as well as collaborative albums, Code to Boys. His newest album, Made in Jaffna, speaks on his family's journey to Toronto, his place in the artistic culture, his divorce, fatherhood, and the experience of the Ulam Tamil community. And now we have the honor to hear a special performance. For the flight like oh, we. home sweet home we're here now, we're here now. Jaff no voice from the six eyes turn that wave to a rip tie and that's word to the woo ha every rap who i who won okay. only i knows i pray to amen church turn me to a sinner man now, hold on. i've been on my grinding on. never question god's time in putting on my whole tribe so we yeah, money yeah, money yeah. money Wait, hold on we've been up and at this ride way before, way before we came households way before, way before these world tours when yeah, no one yeah, showed up yeah, to shows we yeah, still play yeah. seat before we became a threat yeah. became a target before they started coming for our heads before we started making an annual salary every night on the road till we became the bar of what they've been using to measure what you would consider this that's how long we've been apart we've been indulging every snake up in the garden i used to be on my knees every night asking god how could he leave me behind in darkness i used to be on the 43 kennedy every day thinking about how to restart him shooting my shot at the universe using up every penny i had on my ambitions i guess you was listening because now i'll be getting them blessings and plenty for penny for thoughts of my vision whoa
Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here with us. Uh, yeah. Let's just dive into the questions. Um, so yeah. to your music and the connection to the cause, why did you choose a career in music? Um, I think I've, uh, I've always been a, a creative ever since a, a, a child. So what I do now not is not necessarily um, just music. I also do visual art. I also direct my own video. So I think it's what I did is essentially just maintain my childhood imagination and make a career out of it is kind of what the goal has always been is to preserve my inner child um, and my inner uh, creator. So I think music has just been the nucleus of, of what I do. Um, it's always been a great way to express myself. And, you know, I've always been creative as a child um, and it's always been an outlet for me. So yeah, I just continued that professionally. Well, okay. And who are your musical influences? Um, my musical influence is pretty pretty wide. Um, I think, I mean, it's predominantly rooted in, in rap music, but I would say that uh, artists like Outkast um, have been a huge influence for me. Um, I, I generally gravitate towards artists that are uh, world creators. So artists that are... Um, you know, able to present something more than just the music where the visuals and, you know, uh, the message, the meaning, the, the aesthetic, everything kind of comes together. So I've always gravitated towards artists like that. I think, you know, artists like David Bowie or Bjork, um, Kanye, Outkast, um, those kind of artists that I've always gravitated towards in, in terms of my influences. Okay, I see. So what influenced you to make rap music in that centered on Tamil identity and the genocide? I wouldn't say that my music is centered around um, either of those things. I mean, it, it is what I do would inherently be through the lens of the Tamil experience as I'm, a, I'm a, a Tamil person and a Tamil artist. So everything I do, I think is, is always seen in that lens in terms of it being, my art is definitely not centered around um, the genocide. I, I've made one song, um, 100,000 Flowers. And that was for me is um, kind of like an audio documentary for me. Um, and I think it was a necessary a necessary song for me and my community and for me to speak on that. But I don't think the, the genocide is something that I want to continuously inform in my music. Um, you know, I think that could always come through my music. I think that, you know, the, our goal of, of freedom and liberation and perseverance and you know even our anger could all come through my music but I um, I don't necessarily like being categorized as a political rapper or anything like that I don't consider myself a political rapper you know the the people that were um, the voices that are all on this panel are much more informed of, of politics and I'm I'm at, at the end of the day, I'm still an artist. Um, so what I do is, you know, it's it's still rooted in connectivity through emotion, um, through sound, through art, through visuals. But um, yeah, I, I think it's important for me to maintain my independence as an artist. And I think being labeled as a political artist it gets tricky because not everything I do is necessarily political you know most of what I'm trying to do is I would say the root of what I'm trying to do is centered around love and perseverance um, and to inspire people you know and sometimes speaking on uh, political subjects could obviously be in the scope of what I do but it's um, it's not everything that I do yeah, so like speaking of that, you have recently released your new album Made in Jaffna, 
a wonderful mix of personal songs. And what was your purpose when you set out to make this album? Um, it was, I think it was to finally tell the experience of my family. And I think my family's experience is very relatable for a lot of the, the Tamil diaspora. You know, we left Sri Lanka and started a home in Toronto. Um, and that was difficult for my family. And I kind of wanted to capture that experience with Made in Jaffna. But also, I also didn't want to focus on just our plight or just our struggles. I also wanted to focus on, you know, we are a community that is so resilient and we have so much to offer. I wanted to focus on uh, what we have to offer in terms of innovation, in terms of our voices, in terms of our musical contributions, our artistic contributions. Those things are all very important to me and I wanted to capture that aspect of, of us as well on the album. And that was important to me. Um, you know, as much as it is just to speak on um, what we went through in our past and our history with with the country and you know kind of being like the diaspora Tamil community being a community that almost doesn't have a country to claim or a flag to bear so we've created this community this global community amongst ourselves and I'm trying to capture that within within my music um, so this album was really just also give me a, a chance to really you know revisit because it was when I went back to uh, Jaffna for the first time in 2018, that was also very inspiring to me as to how much has changed since I was a child. And also the experience of me going back with my daughter and being in the same driveway that I played at um, and how much that land has changed since I've been there and the stories that have taken place there since I've been there. And that's also something I try to capture through the record as well. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just an important part uh, of my journey to tell this story now um, and speak on our community. And it really was an album for our community. You know, this is not an album that I made thinking, oh, is, is the Canadian audience or is the Canadian music audience going to like this? I honestly didn't care. This was something that I made for our community. Um, and our experiences and I yeah that was important to me yeah well and what do you think of the dead press concert in Australia like a few years ago where the American rap group endorsed the Tamil cops um, you know what's funny I, I didn't actually uh, even know about that until it was uh, pointed out to me before I did this interview and um, the first single that I released, um, Savage, uh, it actually has a Dead Press reference in it. Um, the song Hip Hop, where I'm like, why well, I say it's bigger than hip hop, hip hop, it's bigger than hip hop. And I included that because Dead Press was always a huge influence for me because when I was growing up with rap, they were one of the first voices that they would address the black liberation or the, 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 you know, in their music. And I guess they would be considered political rappers um, in, in some, to some degree, but I would consider them one of the most important rap groups of all time. And, you know, not necessarily the most commercially successful or, you know, the, the greatest rappers, but the most important, because what they were doing was when they say it's bigger than hip hop, you kind of know what they're talking about. And that's why I referenced it because what I'm talking about is like, I'm talking about, uh, I'm using rap music and hip hop to speak on, you know, the Tamil community, but I'm also kind of taking their lead and being like, it's bigger than hip hop. You know, there's, a, there's an entire community at stake here. And for me to reference them and then seeing that they were also supporting, you know, the Tamil movement that was a full circle movement uh, moment for me and i was so happy to see that and um i hope one day i could i could uh chop it up with dead press because they've been a huge influence on my art and um definitely one of the most important rap groups of all time so seeing that it it, 
it really was a full circle moment for me. Yeah, I think so. Like a little goosebump moment. Yeah. And what do you recommend to young Tamils in the diaspora and in the homeland who might be thinking about making music with a message? Um, I would always encourage anyone to tell their story. Um, I think that's essentially what I'm advocating for is I, I hope I could inspire more youth to tell their story, to tell their experience, because we need it. We need uh, that perspective. We need more people to speak on their story. And, you know, it could be as specific as they want, but um, the message is up to them. But I think what we do value is the honesty of their story and their journey and that's always something that I'm always trying to do in my story because coming up in, especially in, in Canada, I always felt like my story or my experience was less valued because I was surrounded by mostly, you know, it's a white artist, white journalist, uh, white institutions. So m stories like mine were rarely heard. And it's only when I fully embraced my story, my own experience, I noticed that then people were more interested. And I think for, you know, young artists coming up, tell your own story. It's very important. We need your stories. We need to hear of your experiences. And that's what I would encourage them to do. Yeah, thank you for that answer. Um, so we are here for the last question. What can Tamil and non-Tamil artists do to raise awareness about the land grab issue? Um, I think conversations like this are super mm -hmm. important. I think just continuously keeping the conversation going. Uh, information, information is tricky because we are now working, you know, we're in a time where we have all of the information in the world that is accessible to us but now we have a new hurdle of, of how that information is synthesized to us and how it, how it uh, gets to us. Because, you know, even something like Instagram, they will uh, shadow ban certain topics that we can't talk about. So it's kind of up to us to share information um, and ha continuously have these conversations. They're very crucial conversations to have but um, yeah, conversations and information and, and uh, spreading information and um, making sure that, you know, we are all kept in the loop because this is not stuff that is covered by mainstream media and they won't cover it, you know, for specific reasons. And even when you think something like Instagram, you're like, well, if I post this, everyone is going to see it and everyone is not going to see it. Like, yeah. I just uh, posted about uh, a COVID relief for Jaffna. And when I noticed like the numbers compared to that post compared to all of my other posts, it's significantly lower, you know? Like mm -hmm. these, this, that's just one example, but there are certain subjects, words, phrases, hashtags that are shadow banned by uh, these networks. So it's, we have to figure out a way to uh, have have these com meaningful conversations and still keep it going, um, but that is a hurdle that we we have, and that's something to be mindful of when we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. But yes, conversations and, and information is key. Thank you for wrapping up this interview with the message to keep the conversation going, and thank you for your time and your contribution. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys.